Erica Johnson. 1M. Shared with Public. Title, It's Still a Good Life, The Sequel. Opening Narration. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. Welcome to the Twilight Zone. Scene 1. The episode opens in the small, isolated town of Peaksville, Ohio. The sky is a perpetual twilight, casting an eerie glow over the landscape. We see a farmhouse in the distance, surrounded by a field of tall corn. Narrator, Rod Serling. Peaksville, Ohio. A place not found on any map. Time stands still here, as does everything else, at the whim of one very powerful resident. Anthony Fremont. Years ago, a six-year-old boy with godlike powers transformed this town and its inhabitants into his own personal playthings. Now, that boy has grown. But his powers and his control remain as strong as ever. This is Anthony's world. And you're about to enter it. Scene 2. Inside the farmhouse, we find Anthony Fremont, Bill Mummy, now a man in his forties, sitting at the kitchen table. He stares at a glass of milk, deep in thought. The house is quiet, almost oppressively so. Anthony's mother, Agnes Fremont, Cloris Leachman, now older and more frail, enters the room. Agnes. Anthony, are you all right? Anthony. Without looking up, I can feel it, mother. Something's different today. Something's coming. Agnes. Worried, what do you mean, Anthony? What's coming? Anthony. Looking up, eyes intense, I don't know yet. But I can feel it. Scene 3. Elsewhere in Peaksville, we see the townsfolk going about their daily lives, under the ever-present fear of Anthony's whims. A new family, the Edwards, has mysteriously appeared in the town. They are confused and frightened, having no idea how they got there. The father, Michael Edwards, Robert Sean Leonard, approaches a group of townspeople. Michael. Excuse me, can anyone tell me where we are? We were driving through Pennsylvania and suddenly we're here. The townspeople exchange fearful glances but say nothing. Michael. Please, someone help us. An old man, Mr. Wilson, William H. Macy, steps forward cautiously. Mr. Wilson. You're in Peaksville. And you need to be very careful. There's someone here you don't want to upset. Michael. Who? Mr. Wilson. Anthony Fremont. If you want to survive, you'll need to play along. Do whatever he wants. And for heaven's sake, don't think bad thoughts. Scene 4. Back at the farmhouse, Anthony is still deep in thought when there's a knock at the door. He opens it to find his daughter, Jenny, Millie Bobby Brown, standing there. She has inherited her father's powers but has been away for several years, learning to control them. Jenny. Hello, Dad. Anthony. Softens, Jenny. It's good to see you. Jenny. Smiling, I've learned a lot. I think I can help you. Anthony. Conflicted. Help me? With what? Jenny. With this place. With the people. We can make things better. Anthony. Skeptical. Better? How? Scene 5. Meanwhile, Michael Edwards and his family are trying to adapt to life in Peaksville. They struggle with the oppressive atmosphere and the constant fear of Anthony. One night, Michael's wife, Sarah, Emily Deschanel, finds their daughter, Lily, McKenna Grace, crying. Sarah. What's wrong, sweetheart? Lily. Through tears, I miss home, mommy. I want to go back. Sarah. Hugging her, I know, darling. I know. Scene 6. Jenny tries to convince Anthony to change his ways. She shows him a vision of what Peaksville could be an idyllic place where people live in harmony, free from fear. Jenny. See, Dad. This is what we could have. People would be happy. You wouldn't be alone anymore. Anthony. Looking at the vision, but how? I've been doing this for so long. I don't know any other way. 
Jenny, taking his hand, you're not alone anymore. Let me help you. Scene 7. Antony reluctantly agrees to try. He starts small, allowing the townspeople to have more freedom and encouraging them to share their ideas. Slowly, the atmosphere in Peaksville begins to change. The Edwards family, too, starts to feel hope for the first time. Scene 8. One night, Antony calls a town meeting. He stands before the townspeople, looking both powerful and vulnerable. Antony. I've decided to make some changes. My daughter has shown me a better way. We're going to work together to make Peaksville a place where everyone can be happy. The townspeople are stunned, but they slowly begin to clap, then cheer. Scene 9. As the days pass, Peaksville transforms. Flowers bloom, children laugh, and the once fearful faces of the townspeople are replaced with smiles. Antony and Jenny walk through the town, watching the changes with a sense of accomplishment. Antony. Turning to Jenny, you were right. This is better. Jenny. Smiling, it's just the beginning, Dad. There's so much more we can do. Closing narration. Peaksville, Ohio, a place once held in the grip of a tyrant's fear, now blossoming with the promise of hope and change. Anthony Fremont, a man who was once a boy with unimaginable power, has learned that true strength lies not in control, but in compassion. A lesson learned in the Twilight Zone. The end. Like. Comment. Share.